Groff. So welcome to, this will be the last Big Bear video for a little bit. It's been heavy on the Big Bear uh, this summer because I was, I was stuck there and I had to make my content in between my trainings. Um, so that was uh, the, the, the genesis of that trip was the, the Cancellara event and this was my training camp for it. So what you're witnessing here was, uh, was a power test. Um, this was kind of my last, my last effort to, to see if, uh, to see where my fitness was at for, for this, for this, you know, bike race thing in Switzerland I was doing. Um, so, uh, so I went for it. I, this, this KOM is sort of the, I guess, one of the, the, the biggest one in Big Bear. Uh, it's called, it's called Onyx Pass. Uh, and there's two ways to, to get up to Onyx Pass. There's the, it's Onyx Pass is the highest point that I know that you can ride up to in SoCal. It's, it's 8,400 and change. Um, so it's, it's super, super high and, uh, and very annoying. And, um, the, so you can get to it from Redlands, which is this ridiculously crazy, uh, I think it's two hours, uh, just going up this thing. Um, or you can get to it from Big Bear, which is obviously Big Bear starts at 6,700 feet. So it, it goes up a good bit, but uh, the, the times, the fast times on it are all around like 30 minutes. Um, so I, I had the KOM for this from when I went up to Big Bear before I had the record for it. And then uh, um, my buddy Chad Hall, who's a local a Big Bear legend, uh, went and got it from me. Um, so this was, this was me in the, with the full speed suit. Uh, getting it back for for this video and and for my power test to sort of uh, geek out on all my gear and make sure everything was the fitness was good enough for uh, for for Switzerland, as we saw, um, Cancellara was not doing intervals like this, um, but uh, this is me. So the the climb here it's it's pretty steady. It's all on this one road. Um, so we're kind of on the outskirts of, you go Big Bear, Big Bear City, and then Sugarloaf is a kind of a neighborhood, uh, where way far out there's some, you know, there's some, there's some trailers and some questionable activity out there, um, possibly related to meth. Um, you know, I don't know if that's true. For sure there's, I don't know. Um, but, uh, so the, the, over here, you're kind of just in the wilderness pretty quick. Um, and this is, so the climb here, we're at, we're at 5%, we're, we'll hit 7,000 feet in a little bit. Um, and this is, of course, the busiest it's ever been. When, when as soon as you start filming, is when all the cars come up. Um, for for an effort like this, altitude is is a weird thing to. I think it's it's individual. Um, I've been up here for like a little less than two weeks, like not ideal. Um, kind of to to get used to. And there's seven thousand feet. To to get used to altitude, you sort of want two and a half weeks. Like three is ideal. Two is the minimum. Um, and I, I didn't quite have the time. I was sort of, I was, I was there for three weeks, but I was going back and forth to events and stuff in between. So I didn't get the full block and dig there, but I think acclimated enough. Um, and Switzerland wasn't too high. So like being, being altitude makes you fitter for, if you're racing at altitude, you definitely need to do the, the three week block. If you're, if you're just racing somewhere, um, Altitude helps a lot, but it's not it's not as mandatory. You don't have to be as as strict about it um, But uh, but but this this effort for for a steady, you know half hour kind of thing. It never gets too steep um, I was sort of looking to do to for a half hour on and there's Brian shout out to Brian um, <laughs> I don't know where he came from or where he was going to but I recognize a buddy on the other side of the road um, the uh, look at all the pine trees. It's so peaceful up here. See, I just just watching a video of myself, even though I'm suffering in Big Bear. Just watching a video of Big Bear, I just I I, I get some, you know, my blood blood pressure goes down. Um, I start craving those delicious burgers that they have everywhere. Um, but uh, anyway, what was I talking about? The the climb. <laughs> the uh, for for half an hour, I can probably do like 400 low 400s now. Um, it, you know that's that sea level so here I was sort of hoping to do close to that but but high 370 probably was was the right amount and I kind of knew that um, so looking at it here you can see I'm kind of being arrow the, the climb is only 2% um, I'm trying to kind of not 
I'm still I'm still pushing the watts, but I'm also when when it's when it's only a few percent, you sort of want to save energy. Um, I want to save my power for for when it's steep, when I can really make up time uh, or or lose time if I screw it up. Um, and then my power spikes to 500. Listen, I didn't pace it that perfect. Um, this was this we filmed this one at the end of I was up there training and then kind of planned it where it was going to be two days of of filming the videos for this. And then at the end, um, so you gotta hydrate. It's me, it's me slamming that Camelback bottle. Um, I don't. Do you need to hydrate for a 30-minute effort? Maybe not. It it might. It probably feels like I did. I feel like my, my mouth was dry, so I I drink. I don't know if that's gonna do anything. Um, it, it probably can't hurt. You know the grams, the the grams versus the the hydration is always a, a, a tricky thing. But I've screwed that up before. Um, when I did Palomar, I was I was thirsty the entire time, and it was kind of torture. Um, but uh, so so here we are. So now it, it's getting a little flatter, and I'm trying to trying to get low. I think I think the first the first sort of third that we're doing, I might have might have cooked it. I might have known that. Um, so so I was sort of trying to trying to ease off and um, and get into a better rhythm here. So as as I always say, uh, when, when you're pacing an effort, especially like a long one, um, I break it up by time more than anything else. I sort of, I set a goal time. So, uh, so I say like, okay, I want this to take 25 minutes. Um, I'm, I'm going to pace it so that I'm dead at 25 minutes. And then, uh, and I'm going to divide it into thirds. Oh, see, I picked a bad number for math. We're gonna say 27 minutes. So hypothetically, 27 minutes was my goal because that's divisible by three. Um, the first nine minutes, I would think, uh, let's go easy. This is I'm 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 saying this over again, and if if you heard it here, but it's it's just it's tried and true. Um, I all I ever won was uphill time trials. That was that was all I was good at. And the the way I do it is I sit there and I think the first third I'm thinking easy, just go easy. The, the middle third, so at minute 18 of this hypothetical 27 minute climb, um, at that point I'm thinking steady. Um, so now we're, we're, in, we're into the steady mode. Uh, so the steady is, you know, you're not emptying yourself. It's a pace that you can, that you feel like you can keep going, you can sustain, um, but you're obviously, you're pushing it. You're not, you're not backing off. Uh, and then the last third is when I'm gonna think, go, I, that's when you can't really think anymore. Um, and that's when you're sort of looking to empty the tank and, and actually push. Um, and, and I found that if you think that, if you consciously think easy the first third and, and steady the middle third and hard the last third, uh, that's you'll actually look at the power file later and it's dead flat. Uh, at least that's that's how my brain works. Maybe some people naturally can pace things better. Um, I I'm not that great. As you can see, the fire truck passed. There, we're deep in, in drought territory and, and forest fire land. Um, everyone's at the ready. If you if you put out a cigarette, somebody will pounce on it. Uh, not that I would know, but. Uh, Big Bear, Big Bear had a fire a year ago. Um, if you haven't gotten to the other Big Bear videos, check out the, well, there's the Cancellara race. Um, the, the, that's a part two of the, of that series was my, my training preparation for here, which was, this was a really fun video that we made. And then, um, and then there was the, the best retirement ever in Big Bear. So we filmed kind of all that the same trip and then we've been putting it together since then. Um, and the best retirement ever is kind of a tour of, of Big Bear. So that's the, the travel show that I've been talking about that I've been working on. We got a lot more coming from that. Um, but the, but, so the best retirement ever is, is you know, here's the rides, here's why we love it up here, here's what, it, here's what it's like to come up to this town. But kind of the idea being if you, if A, to convince you like, hey, I'm gonna go explore this, this special spot. Um, and, and be, uh, you know, to, to be funny and show you why I like it up here and why there's, maybe you'll get a sense of why there's so many damn videos up here. Big Bear, like, I, I got this cabin when I stopped racing. Um, I got a little cabin up there and at the time I was gonna get a job, so that didn't work out. But um, but my thought was, okay, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be in LA, I'm gonna be doing, you know, LA things and living in the city. And, and it felt really nice to sort of have a place that I could that I could go up to. A, I was I was renting it out. So that's the Wattage Cottage. That's a little cycling training camp that, that people can rent out. And when it's not rented out, I can go up there myself. 
um, I can I can get out of the city and, and be in the pine trees and the possible forest fires. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I went up there to train 20, what was that? End of 2013, I went there to basically like a, a buddy and his family said I could stay at their ski house in the summer because there's no skiing to be done. Um, and, uh, and shout out to the Rockline family. And uh, so I, I overstayed my welcome in their house. I think I stayed there like six months uh, to train. And it turned out that was when I sort of, that was the trip that I kind of got to know California and fell in love with it um, and, and never went back east. Um, and, and Big Bear was definitely a big part of that and will always be near and dear to my heart. Um, and you see, it's still 3%. We're still just climbing, still just going up this thing. We're almost almost halfway. Um, the, another thing with altitude is whatever you're acclimated to, um, you got to think about that with your pacing. So, so there's when at the bottom, so it's 6,000 feet, 6,700 where it starts here, you have, you have some power. Um, like it's, it's a, it's a significant difference between 6,000 and 8,000 put it that way. So, so you have some wasit. So kind of at the beginning, you're, you're going to, you don't get to do a steady effort because your, your, your power is diminished. So the second sort of at the higher you go, the, the further, the less your power should be, uh, like not drastically, but normally you want to like negative split that stuff at sea level. You can't really do that uh, at, if you're going from bottom to top and you're, and you're going high. Um, if you saw the video where I did Pike's Peak, uh, the stuff at 12,000 or, or more, um, the, the, the power was, was pretty hilarious how, how low it was. Because um, there's, there's, there's no oxygen in your body and, uh, and nothing going to your muscles. Um, as you can see here, I wish I had the, the aero bike for this one because um, it's 5% climb like this, definitely faster on, you know, if I had a time trial bike, that would have been, been better, but I don't, I don't do those anymore. Um, but I got the, I got the Castelli cookie speed suit. I got my, my cookie socks, the, the aero socks, which are definitely watt saving. And then I got my, my Matic tubulars and I'm, I'm geeked out enough. I can't really can't say I wasn't, uh, <laughs> no one's ever ridden that climb with a setup this fast. So I can't, I can't gripe about it too hard. Um, I believe the, I believe the weather was pleasant on this day. Uh, not too hot for, for the summer. Um, Big Bear, Big Bear can get toasty because it's, it's pretty exposed as you see. Uh, we do have, uh, we have a follow vehicle here. So what you're looking at, if you look at the far right, on your screen, there's a uh, little black thing. So that's the the Sea Sucker mount. Um, so Sea Sucker is a sponsor. I made a video for them too of the the bike rack that suction cups onto your roof. Um, they also make one. You know, people. The the first question is, oh, do you trust that that rack to hold your your bike on the roof? The real question is, I tr look how much I trust it. I trust my phone is on one of those because uh, we were Instagram living this, and then the GoPro is on the other one. Um, and so yes, I trust my bike, but you know I'd be I'd be quite lost without the old iPhone. Um, but it's it's just suction cups on there, and you pump it, and then it holds the it holds it. It's real steady. Look at it; it doesn't even it doesn't shake at all. Um, if it does, that's the that's the bumpy pavement on the car. So I have a, I have a follow car here. I think this is yeah this is the Velofix van that we're mounted to, and then in front is uh, is my 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 video guy. Uh, for that episode so there's a lot really a lot going into this particular effort um, maybe maybe more than there should be you know who am I to judge myself uh, you'll judge me that's fine pretty sure I'm hurting at this point I can kind of tell now yeah I'm putting my head down you can you can put your you can get a little more arrow you can uh, you, you can you can fold over and sort of fake it you keep the speed up without, uh, when, when the watts start to die, it's like, I'm going to back it off a little bit, I'm going to get more arrow, and, and that'll buy me another five minutes of, of effort here. Um, we're getting high up now, too. We're, we're approaching 8,000, still at 4%. This is, uh, so the, the tour to Big Bear goes around the lake and then goes right up this, and this is where it always blows up. Um, and then it goes down like halfway and then back up to the other side. It just does a bunch of bunch of U-turns. Um, 
but I've I've gone up this climb so many damn times. Uh, my long loop goes finishes down this, so it's real pleasant. You get to 8,400 feet, and that's like five hours into the ride, and then you, you literally like coast the last 20 minutes. You can you can almost coast to the Wattage Cottage, is uh, is one little hill in the in the neighborhood. You can almost just super tuck right in there enough with, if you have nice bearings, you know, rolling resistance and the other dorky things. Um, my heart rate is a little bit high for a half hour effort. Um, I think I think I was kind of kind of fresh going into this. It was it was a long week of like I was doing things but not riding that much. We're you know we're we're filming jokes where I snorted the cliff bar mix. Um, I was saving that one. I was really proud of that one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just in the steady mid 170s. Maybe that's normal for me. I don't know. I don't. I don't look at heart rate or power much at all, to be honest. Once you kind of know your your like, I, I I look at them, but I'm not really basing my effort on that anymore. I think I think that took a very long time for me to kind of know my legs and be able to listen to that. But uh, my my legs trump my whatever the the computer says is kind of in second place. Here I got sick of being arrow. I'm I'm upright again. Nice big shoulder is part of Big Bear. You don't notice it until you've got a, two cars in the shoulder and so people can pass you. All to your, to your right and left is uh, tons of mountain bike trails that connect from like downtown Big Bear, which is seven or eight miles away at least. Um, you can, you can, I, I can, I did those once and I, I, literally I crashed into a thorn bush. Um, so I, I haven't, I think that sort of stopped me from, uh, from messing around. So now 8,000 feet. God, that's so high. Um, the, uh, yeah, the, the, I've, I've, I've played around the mountain bike to know that it's, that it's great up there. Um. But I, I I won't go without Derek Herman to show me around. Um, he's the he's the king of the the mountain biking scene up there. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll start doing that more. This this trip was serious. This trip was was real training and not you know not playing around in the woods on on some knobby tires. I'm, just, I'm doing my intervals and get my work done. So now I'm starting to starting to feel that 8,000 feet. Um, maybe I'm feeling the first 10 minutes where I where I push a little too much, but I'm not I'm not slowing down. Uh, 16 miles an hour ain't bad, but the, the first bit I was going like 28 uphill. That's stupid. That's that's never gonna work. Um, figure that out. I'm definitely hurting here because I keep falling into the, the little shoulder, the dirt over there. Kind of getting the home I know exactly how many like bends in the road. This road could be torture because you can see so far away. You it's like oh the end of the road's right there, and then uh, it takes four minutes to get to that the next bend. Who am I kidding? It's all torture. I'm just sitting here in my kitchen recording this audio, I'm, I'm thirsty. You'll excuse me. I should have made popcorn to watch myself suffer. My heart rate's still creeping up. I'll, I'll give myself credit. I think, uh, I mean, obviously it's going to go up over the course of an effort, but it's not going up too fast. And it's, it's pretty stable. Still at that five percent. Yeah, now I'm just now I'm just trying to do three fifty. <laughs> the bottom I was I was trying to knock over four hundred, and here I'm just just begging to see three fifty. There you go. 
Nice job, sir. At this point, I'm thinking about what's going to be for dinner. Uh, we went to Murray's Saloon, um, which is which is an awesome, uh, awesome little filthy bar in Big Bear, but filthy like in a good way. Um, it's it's sort of locals only kind of thing because it's behind the touristy area. You can't. It's hard to find it if you don't know it's in there. But uh, they have karaoke, and then the believe it or not, they have a great like. They have a good seared tuna and a really good salmon salad, which is just not what you think when you're in a in a, a weird karaoke bar. I wonder what cars think when they're passing me doing these things. Like, how annoying am I on a scale of one to ten to like a human? But if you're on this side of Big Bear, like you, the this isn't the way you're supposed to drive. There's a much faster way to drive down to Redland. The people out here are sort of up to something. Um, they're, they're locals trying to trying to do a shortcut, and I guess it's backfiring if I'm in your way. But there's not that many cars. And now I know we're we're getting to the end there, and the, the last little bit, like you can sort of start squeezing that. You don't you don't sprint, you don't don't kill yourself. But uh, I'm I'm not scared to 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 push the power at this point. Um, I think I pushed it, and then and then was like, oh, hang on, we're not there yet. That was a completely safe pass from that red truck. They don't care. At this point, it was weird. I was, uh, I don't, I don't know why. Like I, I'm, I PR'd this. Like I definitely ripped this when I was a pro, and I'll, I'll never understand exactly what's happening with my body since I stopped racing. I, I do think at least for a while I was getting better at efforts like this, and definitely like I don't have endurance day to day like I used to. Um, but but it is funny that I could PR anything when you know I'm training half as much and spending my time making a YouTube show. But I think it's it's all it's all specificity, you know, it's what you train for. And I stopped training for endurance, started training for like ten to sixty minute only uphill climbs. So like you got me into a stage race, I'd be in big trouble, but I can go faster than than the the fill of twenty thirteen to twenty sixteen when I was up here uh, training real hard. that up there is the actual top. Now I can see it. I can taste it. So I don't have much gas to actually push. There we go. I mean how the road just never ends. When we squeeze out my heart rate goes up one beat. 180, that's <laughs> that's all that's all the old tickers got. I remember, I remember seeing 210 when I finished time trials back in the day when I was like 19. And there's the top. Alright, that's it. That's the those are the camera guys laughing at me um cool till till the next one uh next video we have coming out will be a full best time ever episode so uh, keep an eye out and don't forget to subscribe you